We're continuing our studies in Chapter 7, Enzyme Kinetics and Inhibition, and in this lesson we want to look at non michaelis menten kinetics. So there are examples of enzymes that do not obey michaelis menten kinetics. Remember, in order to derive that expression for the michaelis menten equation, we made some simplifying assumptions. So if in any case we find a reaction that violates one of those assumptions, then those simple rules no longer apply and it might not be appropriate to use that michaelis menten equation. So it becomes an important point then for us to know when it is appropriate and when it is inappropriate to use certain equations. In this example here, we have the reaction catalyzed by transketolase. It converts fructose 6-phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate into erythrose 4-phosphate and xylose 5-phosphate. Notice that we have two substrates and two products. These are called bi-bi reactions, that is a bi-substrate, bi-product reaction. So notice this violates our first assumption, and that was that we had one substrate and one product. So it doesn't fit the simple michaelis menten model. Notice in this case, since we have two substrates, the enzyme will have an affinity for each one, so we actually have two KMs. There is a way in which we can apply the michaelis menten model in this case, and that is if we take one of our substrates and hold its value constant, that is a constant concentration of one substrate at a high level, we've essentially converted this to a one substrate reaction, and it might be appropriate to use the michaelis menten equation in that case. For these bi-bi reactions, there are a couple of different mechanisms that are possible, and so let's look at that next. The first is called the ordered sequential, and that's illustrated at the top of the screen here. We have the free enzyme. It binds our first substrate A and our second substrate B, so here we have the enzyme bound to both substrates. It will then carry out catalysis and convert those to our two products, and then we have an ordered release, P first and then Q, and here's our regenerated form of our original enzyme. So it's sequential in that we have to bind both substrates before any catalysis occurs, and that there's an order in which the substrates bind and the products release. Now there's another sequential model and that is both substrates bind before catalysis occurs, but we find in some cases the order in which they bind is random, and there may be an, a random order in which the products are released. But in either case, if it's a sequential mechanism, both substrates must bind before any catalysis occurs. Another type of bye-bye -bye reaction is called a ping-pong mechanism, and that's illustrated at the top of the screen here. Here we have our free enzyme. It binds the first substrate, and then we find that it's probably going to pick up a group from A, so now we have a modified form of the enzyme, and that's illustrated as F here, and we formed our first product, P. Our first product, P, is released, and here's our modified enzyme here. Now we bind our second substrate, B, and now that gets converted to our final product, Q, Q is released, and here's our original form of the enzyme. So you'll notice in this case we bound a substrate and carried out some catalysis without ever binding that second substrate. So hopefully you can see why this is called a ping-pong mechanism. Substrate in, product off, second substrate in, second product off. So again, the distinction here is that we can bind a substrate and carry out catalysis before we bind that second substrate. And we'll see an example of this as we go through the semester. Another example of an enzyme that would not obey michaelis menten kinetics would be one that, uh, where the catalysis involved multiple steps. So recall one of our assumptions was that the, ca the catalytic rate constant was equal to K2 and that that was irreversible, that there was just one step. But in examples like this, the transketolase reaction, there are multiple steps. So kcat is not s simply one rate constant, but a collection of rate constants, and it can get pretty complicated. The meaning of kcat is still the same. It's still the enzyme's turnover number. That is the number of substrate molecules that get converted to product per enzyme molecule, but it doesn't follow our simple model.
Another example would be allosteric enzymes that exhibit cooperativity. Remember the example of hemoglobin, where the oxygen bound in one subunit converted the molecule from the T to the R form, and that made it easier for oxygen molecules to bind in the other subunit. So the binding was cooperative. We see the same thing in the case of enzymes. That is, the presence of substrate in one active site affects the catalytic activity at other active sites. This is often true for multi-subunit complexes, though we will look at one example of a rather impressive allosteric enzyme that is only one polypeptide chain. So again, you can see from the a graph here, when we plot initial velocity versus substrate concentration, we don't get the characteristic hyperbolic plot that we see from michaelis menten kinetics. It's now sigmoidal, and so we can't use that equation any longer. So these were all good uh, examples of how there might be enzymes that did not obey michaelis menten kinetics. In our next lesson, we want to see, are there compounds that can inhibit enzyme catalysis and what happens if that inhibition persists.